Was Christopher Columbus the ISIS of his generation? Hmm, I don't know. Kevin in Raleigh, North Carolina, you think that I am part of a Marxist plot to destroy American history? No, not you, Tom. I, I do think, I mean, it's no doubt Columbus was a, you know, he was a tyrant. He was uh, a bad person. There's no doubt about that. But I think just, you know, the fact that we celebrate the first contact and Western expansion through him, it, it's the attack on that really sort of stems from what you see all the time with Marxists, and that is they attack the national holidays. I've lived in Marxist countries, and, you know, it's something that happens all the time, you know, when they first come into power. The, uh, what, give you know, me a, I, we don't I, celebrate... We don't celebrate, you know, things that are are horrible about Columbus Day. We celebrate the Western expansion. But I would say, you know, at the same time, people celebrate, you know, people celebrate Che Guevara, Mao, all these people. Not as a national people. holiday here in the United States. And Karl Marx was an economist. He wrote about economics, uh, carried on an interesting conversation, correspondence with Abraham Lincoln, among other people. Um, it, what... What does Marxism or Marx have to do with Columbus? I don't get it. Well, Karl Marx, nothing. But when you look at the Marxists that are around today, none of them actually do anything that Karl Marx had intended. You have Obama passing the TPP. You have Obama passing the Marxist. Are you suggesting that Obama is a Marxist? I suggest that, yes, he is. I mean, there's no doubt. He said he loves socialism. There's no doubt Obama's a Marxist, but he's not a good Marxist, and neither are most of the people like Barry Sanders, who, who Bernie Sanders, who say the same stuff, yet still pass these ridiculous trade agreements. Marx focused Bernie on Sanders has opposed the, every single trade agreement since NAFTA, CAFTA, and SHAFTA back in the 1990s. He's backing um, Obama on the TPP. I no, he's not. Why. No, he's not. Bernie Sanders is... A, Actively and aggressively, uh, along with Sherrod Brown, ag- along with most of the of the of the Progressive Caucus, it's over ninety members, the largest caucus in the House of Representatives. They're all opposed to the TPP. Uh, and maybe and, I have him confused with uh, uh, confused with uh, Barry. Uh, what's his name? But I think you, you know, have him confused point. with some conservative dem someplace because the the no, progressive. No, the Democrats are fully backing him. Maybe the progressive no. some progressives aren't, but the Democrats are fully backing the TPP. Harry Reid, Nancy no. Pelosi, full throttle. No, and Tom, why? No, else? Na- Harry Reid, in Tim fact, Lutton pulled it off the congressional agenda back a couple after months ago. After people raised hell, look, Tom, they passed the Monsanto Protection Act. Obama put the VP this of does, this over does, the FDA. You know, Kevin, I get it that, you know, you want to come on the air and you want to attack Obama and all this kind of stuff. But calling him a, uh, calling him a Marxist, it, it, it makes people laugh at you. Tom, that's his words. Look at what he wrote in college. Look at what he said on, you know, to these groups of people that are Marxists on his campaign trail, Tom. You talk about the stuff he said he's going to do, like... Close Gitmo. You talk about all the lies. Closing Gitmo is a Marxist thing. Karl Marx was an economic analyst. He he analyzed how capitalism works. Have you ever read Das Kapital, or for that matter, Marx and Engels, the Communist Manifesto? It's only like forty pages. Have you ever read it, Kevin? Yes, of course. I'm not saying that that was a Marxist thing. I'm saying Obama is a Marxist, self-admitted. I'm saying that the that's that's Kevin. The, Kevin, I'm sorry. You you have been watching too much Fox or listening to too many right-wing talk show hosts. Yeah, I wish that Obama was a Marxist. I wish he understood Marx's critique and analysis of capitalism. Yeah, any any economist, by the way, who has studied any economics at all should should understand that those things. I'm, I don't think the Marx's prescriptions were necessarily right, or at least Engels' prescriptions were necessarily right. But Marx's analysis of capitalism, I defy you to find one piece of Marx's analysis of capitalism in Das Kapital that you can that you can dispute, Kevin. Oh, I can dispute plenty of it because it leaves out human nature. Name, Tom. name. No, it, it doesn't. Leaves out the fact it that does people not. are going to want private property, Tom. No, it does it, not. It, it, Rebutes the pl- it, it's uh, completely unsensible, Dom. I, I read Marx. I agree with Marx on certain points. You can't have. I'm talking about his. I you know I'm giving you his prescriptions didn't work. They they work they work fine for small communities. The kibbutz in Israel, the you know communist Marxists. If you've got a hundred, two hundred people, everybody knows everybody. You can run things with sure. communal ownership. But once you have a, a society large enough for people to behave anonymously then, you know, that that communal ownership doesn't work. 
But that doesn't mean that the analysis of capitalism is that Marx laid out, which was brilliant. And by the way, Marx wasn't the first one to do it. A lot of what Marx was saying was what Adam Smith said in Theory of Moral Sentiments back in 1779. Tom, I agree with you, but I'm saying that the but, people but, today, but this is not Obama. Today, Obama's not sitting around doing argument. a critique of capitalism. But I'm not talking about Obama solely. I'm no, saying you're saying that Obama's a Marxist. It's nonsense. This is, this is, this is Fox News bumper sticker today. garbage. No, Tom, he, he admitted it. Look, the socialists of today, the they preach this stuff, but only at the middle class, Tom. You have these politicians who are backing all kinds of corporate... Kevin, what's a socialist? A socialist is a person who's on a progressive march towards communism, which is, you know, take away private property slowly. Take okay. away Did you go slowly. to public schools, Kevin? No, I went to a private school, Tom. You went to private school. Okay, so so you were able to exempt yourself from, from our socialist, I'm not, our socialist yes, I'm schools. I'm not part of your... your your dumbed down common core audience. Okay, Tom, and right? and do you do you drive on public roads, I have Kevin? My degree, sure I do, Tom. And I don't think that okay, so, shouldn't be handled so, by government. But I'm not a I'm not a socialist in the regards to where I think we need to redistribute wealth amongst people, and we need to pay for other people. So you think the roads should be privatized? You think our schools should be privatized? They could be, Tom. They okay. could be. Well, at least you're consistent, you Kevin. You're you're talking about David Koch's campaign platform in 1980 when he ran for vice president on the Libertarian ticket. You know, I, well, I am a Libertarian, but I would say yeah, that, obviously Tom, that the people. It's really people tragic. Today, you know, Kevin. People, you know, Libertarians who are are you worth more than a hundred million dollars? No. Okay. Then then you're a sucker. Libertarian people who who claim that they are libertarians who are who are average working people or even you know if you got a couple million bucks, you're a sucker for the people who are the real the real rich in this country because under libert libertarian theology like in places like the libertarian paradise of Liberia for example, no public infrastructure, no public schools, no public nothing except an army and a court system. This is what this you know this is what the Koch brothers would like to have. Well, I can't say what they want to have for America, but this is. This is the libertarian fantasy, and, and it's, it's toxic.